Hi, I'm Jim Smith of Golden Real Estate. You've heard my voice on all the other videos, but this is my personal home. And uh, as you can see, it has solar power. We have 9.75 kilowatts, which is enough power to power all our household needs, as well as to charge my Chevy Volt, which you can see in the driveway there. So let me go and show you this home. It has, not only does it have solar power, but it has a lot of sustainable features in terms of, for instance, a couple uh, sun tunnels or solar tubes, which is a brand name. These are not solar tubes. Uh, this is a different brand, but uh, they bring natural light into dark areas of the house to reduce the need for electricity uh, to light those areas. And then there's a, a massive amount of weatherization and insulation that's been done. And I'll be introducing you to the vendor who did that work or whose crew did that work, and he'll explain what that involved. So this is a very sustainable house with solar panels. Let's go and look at it. I just realized I forgot to introduce my unlicensed personal assistant in charge of human relations, Flower. So many people in Golden know Flower. She's sort of a mascot for my company. This is not an air conditioner. It looks like an air conditioner. It's what you're used to seeing next to your house, but this is a heat pump. It's an air source heat pump. And this unit cools our house during the summer but it also reverses its compressor function and heats the house in the winter so that my gas furnace only needs to come on when it gets below, say, about 20 degrees. This thing will actually heat the house as long as the ambient outside air is 20 degrees or higher. And that's important because I've got so much electrical power from the sun now that this helps me to reduce the gas consumption for heating the house as well. In the background you can see the uh, inverters for our solar panels. There are two inverters because there's so much. The 9.75 was more than one inverter could handle, so we have two inverters. A lot of electrical stuff over there. But the important thing is that it, it, the net effect is that we uh, produce as much electricity as we need, both for the house and for my Chevy Volt. Now let's go inside and look at some more improvements. I'm in my garage now and I have the lights turned off on, on purpose because this is our sun tunnel that was installed. It's a Velux brand sun tunnel installed by uh, Design Skylights in Evergreen. And this, before that sun tunnel was installed, this would have been pitch dark. And here's our laundry room, pitch dark also, except that we've now installed a 14 inch sun tunnel in in the laundry room. We'd always have to turn on the lights there and here. I'll turn on the lights now because I'd like to introduce Bill Lucas Brown from GB3 Energy Solutions who did the weatherization of our house. Tell him the things that you did because I, you did an energy audit of our house and gave me a menu of things to, to do that could improve the energy efficiency of the house and I said do it all. So tell him what all means. You know, we always start with an energy audit anytime that we want to make improvements to a house because uh, our windows first, is a solar system first, maybe it's insulation, maybe it's a new furnace. So an audit helps to prioritize what's the biggest bang for the buck. One of the things that Jim wanted to do was to make this garage more comfortable and healthier for the inside of the house. Garages need to be completely separated from the house as far as insulation and airtight. You're starting your car in here, you're starting your lawnmower in here. You want to make sure that no air is going from this space and bringing carbon monoxide into your house. So we make sure and we can test to make that sealed. In addition, garages tend to be very hot, especially if they're attached because the hot air that's in your attic, you've been up there, you know how hot it gets. If there's no insulation over the attic of the garage, this becomes a radiant panel at 130, 140 degrees and people feel like my garage is so hot. Just adding insulation, air sealing over this really made a difference. In addition, a lot of garages, exterior walls are not insulated at all. We drilled a hole in this garage, found there was zero insulation there, and we can actually drill holes, which you can't see anymore because we've patched them, but we can add insulation to walls without ins any insulation at all. And we can also add insulation and improve the insulation level in many walls that have a little bit of insulation, but there's a lot of airflow in there. So we can densely pack insulation in a wall, which greatly improves its performance. Okay, so 
what were the other hidden things that we can't see? Like, we're not going to go up into the attic, but no. tell us what you did in the attic. You know, an attic needs to be not only insulated, like if you can think of a sweater, you've got to have that insulation there. But if you're out on a cold, blustery day like today, and it's windy or it's chilly at all, there's nothing to stop the air. The same thing is true if you look, if we removed all the insulation from the attic, we would see the tops of walls, we'd see electrical penetrations, plumbing penetrations, uh, we'd see recessed can lights, anywhere where there's an electric outlet, all of those places add up to a very significant leak. And it's at the worst possible place that can leak because it's the top of your house, most pressure, warm air rises, and it pushes air out through all those hidden leaks. A really good insulation job that really makes a significant difference is to move the existing insulation, seal everything with a combination of foam and caulk, whatever is appropriate for the, for the penetration for the leak, sealing that, putting the insulation that's there back, and then capping it all up to, we typically insulate to R60, uh, which sounds like a lot, but the Department of Energy recommends that anywhere from R49 to R60 in this climate. So it takes a while to seal, but we can reduce the amount of air that leaks out of your house by an average of 25% by just sealing the attic alone. I know you brought in like a truckload of bales. How many bales of uh, cellulose we did used, you bring in? We uh, used, you know, I don't know the number, but, but it was I a guess truck about load. 180. Yeah, and and that's compressed. And then it, yeah. uh, <laughs> how many pounds was that? Of? Uh, it'd be 30 times 180, so three yeah a lot five six thousand pounds of insulation yeah right and uh and some a lot of it in the garage which started with zero but also a lot in the rest of this house is, which is a ranch style home and this is a relatively new home uh, and it's you have code insulation for when it was built but many homes even though they're code built are really leaky and we could tell going up into jim's attic by seeing dirty insulation that air had been being filtered by the fiberglass insulation so we knew that that was an energy loss, uh, adding insulation there. And there's energy leaks all throughout the house that you can discover with the use of a blower door and an infrared camera. A lot of pieces of trim around windows weren't sealed. You'd never know that they weren't sealed without this blower door. In addition, the basement, uh, besides the attic being a very important part to seal, the basement and where the house sits on the foundation called the rim and the band joist tends to be the second most leaky area in a house and we completely sealed that. And we'll, t we'll show you that. Let's go down. Later. Yeah, let's go down to the basement and show that stuff because that we can see, unlike the attic. Let's go. All right. So we're down in the basement of Jim's house here and you can see up here where these joists set on the foundation wall and something you'll note is that there's foam surrounding the insulation. You're not just seeing fiberglass. Fiberglass, again, is just a sweater. You need a shell. So that's why the insulation here has this vinyl back on it. And this insulation is an encapsulated bat. And it needs to be sealed. It needs to be zipped up. And that's what the foam is for. In addition, over here, this is where a cantilever bumped out from the home. We insulate it a little bit differently here, but we actually can pack insulation in. A lot of people are very uncomfortable in their homes where they have bump outs or cantilevers that, that are out into space because the bottom never gets insulated right. Now that's a warm space above. Yeah, we we're fortunate in this case that our basement was unfinished. Yes. It'd be really impossible to do this in a it's, finished basement. It's tough to do. We can drill holes, we can add foam. It can be done, and there's a lot of leakage there, but usually there are other priorities that are higher to tackle before this. Yeah, now we have a crawl space too. Let's go over there and show them what we did. All right. Okay. So this is Jim's crawl space. When we first did our audit, we noticed that there was a vapor barrier here that was just black plastic, but it wasn't sealed. Moisture can really, even if it, the ground looks dry, a significant amount of moisture, over 50% often of the moisture in your home comes from the ground. What's worse, radon, methane, other soil gases can come from that as well. So we completely seal a vapor barrier here. So it's actually glued to the foundation. So no longer can any of these soil gases come in. That also helps your house stay more efficient and cooler because your heat used to evaporate the water from that appearingly dry soil, but now it can evaporate it because it's completely sealed. In addition, you see the white walls now. The walls used to have fiberglass, the sweater on it, that were not faced. They didn't have that shell. And that's pretty standard in production it's, homes. It's very standard, and you need to have, really, that's one of the big problems with fiberglass of any insulation that doesn't have it, what we call an air barrier. If it's just exposed fiberglass, you'll note that it starts to get dark over time. Mm -hmm. That's because heat 
moves through it in a convective loop and it doesn't really work. It's mm -hmm. again, it's a sweater on a cold day. It just doesn't mm -hmm. keep you warm. Adding an air barrier, adding a shell and sealing it now makes the space above this much more comfortable. And of course we have the same uh, the same area, what do you call that up there? That's the rim and band joist. The rim and band joists were, were sealed in the same way here and taped together and the 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 plastic that was put over the the fiberglass on the walls was also sealed to the uh, the fi the plastic that's on the floor, so it's totally airtight. Correct. I'm looking forward to seeing how cozy this home is in the winter. Yeah, it'll be nice. Yeah, thanks. Okay, well that about conclude that does conclude our tour of my house. So thanks thanks uh, Bill for coming and showing us uh, what you did for my for my house. Thank you, Jim, for finding us a home. <laughs> <laughs>